Hi, hi, welcome to Joy Fido International. So as usual, something exciting comes to my mind and I decide to share it with you. Now, what does Joy Fido International represent? We thought we were gonna say, we're here to inspire you to greatness or to inspire you to get on with your life and make the best of it. But the more I get to understand about us as humans, the more my, my energy is going more and more into understanding the human mind. And so I probably will be calling it more of mind development. My name is Joy Fido, welcome on board. Okay, so the topic today is definitely mind development. And that's what really came to my mind today. And I thought, yes, I have to share this. Because when I do share them, um, it reminds me to remember some of the things that came to my mind when I was thinking about it or when my mind went there. And then it becomes like um, a resource for me as well to go back in there and listen to myself because I learned from me as well. It's, it's really strange, but after I share my experiences with you or my knowledge with you or my skills with you, I look at it again and I pick up some new tips or learn something new. So mind development, what, what is it about? It is such an important topic that I am so excited to be sharing what's come to me with you. So this is how it works. As we grow up, as, we, as we're children, you know the way they say it, a child is born with nothing. You know, they call it tabula vasa. So the brain is empty, the child is born. And then as the child is growing, you know, learning to crawl, learning to cuckoo, cuckoo with the parents and laugh with the baby laugh and all of that. So the baby is watching the mother's expressions, watching the dad's expressions, watching everyone around him or her and slowly learning new things. So we start to imprint information onto the child's brain. And apparently the child really picks up on all of this until the child is about seven before they start forming their own character. And apparently for people who really want to mess around with your understanding, they play with this child up to that age of seven and the child has formed who they're going to be. So as the child is growing and picking up on all these tips with the mind, so is the body growing as well. <coughs> and as a, a human body, what then happens is we feed ourselves. So a child is hungry, you feed the child. A child is hungry. So depending on the amount of food you throw in, obviously with genetics and the environment and things that are happening, this child may grow up to become really huge human being physically or may from a certain size depending on the things that may have contributed to creating that child's size but that's the physical form and for us humans you know for a man we we get up to a man gets up to a certain age maybe i think usually between 18 to 21 and then the height stops uh, you know physically tall they stop growing with the height and then of course, the more food we eat, the bigger we become and we expand sidewise. But for women, I think women generally end up about 18. And then again, it stops, height, and then the body starts to expand. And apparently the body is like a balloon and depending on whatever you put in that body, it could expand and expand and expand and it doesn't stop expanding. And that's why we then start to watch what we put into the body so the body doesn't get too big. But what, what then happens to the child's mind? What then happens to our mind? Now this is, this is a part that's really, really interesting to me because I'm really curious to know what happens and why some of us become so smart, so intelligent, so sharp, while others don't do all of that why why is it 
is it the environment is it the interaction what what happens to us in our mind and I have taken on this to, to try and make it my business to understand what goes on in our mind. But you know what they said? There is no part of us that, you know, you can actually touch and say, this is a human mind. Most times when you say mind, people go touching their chest, but that's where the heart is. And sometimes when you, I tried doing a bit of um, a research this morning, I asked my kids to, let me check the, the, the value of the mind to the body or, what what the mind brings on board and all they were reading was all about the the brain so people automatically connect the mind with the brain and so you remember we said the tabula versus the brain and now information is coming in slowly and the person is forming what becomes the knowledge they get but the human mind apparently from all the books i've read and the tapes I listen to is the one thing that separates us from animals and apparently the the pig which I don't know if you remember there was a time they had that movie on um, this pig that I can't remember what name it was called the pig is the one animal that has every part that the human body has and so most times when they are operating on the human body and they want to change a particular part they may take that from the pig say the heart or say the brain or i don't know but pig is the nearest to the human body apparently but what separates us humans from animals is the mind but remember i've said there is no part of the body that is called the mind so why am i so curious about the mind the mind is this place that everything that makes us who we are comes from it is a point where we make decisions. It is the point where we hold thoughts. And you remember that book, Think and Grow Rich. So if you don't think, you may not be able to put two ideas together. Because first the idea comes, and then you, 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 you think about what you want to do with it. And then based on the thoughts that you put together, you may then implement it and act on it. So the mind creates a lot the mind is what makes us who we become so after this stage of growing 18 21 depending on what it is remember when that child is still young the parents are still making decisions for that child so the parents are using their mind to create what they think is best for that child but now this child has grown up the child has to make their own decisions so at what stage does the mind stop growing that's a big question we have to understand and that's why the title is mind development we never stop growing in the mind no human being stops growing in the mind ideally ideally and that's why you find that some people no matter their size i i try to tell as many of us as possible what makes you a great person has absolutely nothing to do with your size it is how you grow your mind to make thoughts to come up with ideas to come up, come up with you know skills and knowledge and using your experiences and adding them all together and it creates something that becomes this amazing thing so when you hear people who become great and experts at certain things it is based on what their mind has been able to put together so what creates this mind that could form such great thoughts or great ideas that's where we are looking at this is what we're trying to understand so the human mind is where my interest is and so what can we do to help our mind to get to this place where i'm just trying to explain this place where i'm trying to decide our mind helps to helps us to become who we are and when i was thinking about it and it, it thought just came to my head and this thought just took me straight to the bible you know how whatever i'm thinking about must connect with the bible and it's a passage in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. And I'll read it to you. It says, when I was a child, 
I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away <laughs> childish things. So when I was a child, I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. So we're talking about the human development. This child is growing up, thinking as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, I spoke as a child. But now that I'm a man, I put away childish things. So what that message is trying to say to us is, we develop, we develop, which is our topic, mind development. As a child, you were at this level. Now that you're grown up, this is where you are. So the human mind is what creates a great personality. In one of the videos I've explained about this person who had no hand and no legs and is huge in human development or personality, personal development. What makes us become that? is growing our mind, growing our mindset. How do we grow our mindset? How do we grow our mindset? And again, takes me to the Bible. Proverbs 4, verse 7. And I'll read that to you again. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, we're talking about the same thing. So some, 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 some Bibles will explain it even in a different way. Say, above all things, get understanding. So this is where I want us to start thinking. Because like the book, Think and Grow Rich, Okay, so people were like, oh, let me just sit down and keep thinking, maybe I'll get rich. The message there was, if your thoughts don't put things together that are right, that can guide you to the right direction, you're not going to get there. So we need to start understanding how do we grow our mind from being a child to grown out to this man. Because what happens to most of us, and I can tell you most of us, hence we have our 10% of the top region, and 90% of us sitting down there. We stop growing. We stop growing. Our understanding stops. We refuse to take on knowledge. We don't want to hear anybody tell us anything again. We think we know it all. But you see how the Bible said it? When you were a child, you taught in a certain way. So now that you're a man, take on the, 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 the knowledge of being a man. And how are you going to do that? How does knowledge come? Knowledge is not like going eat food and your belly is full and you grow taller or your cells recycle, which is making you healthy. That's physical. When it comes to the mind, it is mental. And one of the big questions I keep asking us, which is why I am so interested in the mind, is how do we feed the mind? Because remember, the body stops at a certain age. But the mind never stops. This is what, what's going to make you that great person if you want it to be is to grow your mind because the mind grows continuously you can be 90 years old still learning new things and there was a story of a lady who was 80 and she was learning to go uh, uh, to speak another language and I, I've seen so many videos of people over 50 learning to go and lose weight and taking on um, um, you know physical education and teaching it there's a lady I, I see on YouTube. So, all of this can come from what your mind says to you. And why I'm so interested in it is, it is what our mind says that we respond to. 
we respond to our mind. But see, for your mind to guide you properly, to guide you in the direction of growth and success and achievement, you have to feed your mind. Just like you feed your body, you have to feed your mind. You don't have to starve your mind. Because I think that's what most of us do. We just stop. We stop feeding our mind. We think by going to school, that's how you feed your mind. And so most of us, we finish the college or, or university, as you call it. We think, oh yeah, I've done enough education. Why do I need any more? But the mind development is the greatest life education you can give yourself. So I'm very keen on how we can develop our mind. How, what do we need to do to make it grow? To make us embrace other ideas? To make us have new thoughts that can help us in the right direction? To make us open up? And I call it knowledge, information and skills. All of these things are things that need to keep coming to you. You need to open up yourself. Because lots of people close up. And you hear when people want to tell people all this. You, you think like a child. You're still a child. Why are you behaving like a child? What do you think they're saying when they say things like that? What you're trying to say to that person is, you have not grown up. Just like the Bible said. When I became a man, I put away childish ways. So childish ways have to stop. And you need to open yourself up for growth. And the growth of the mind is continuous. It never stops. And some of the things I do to help me open up and learn more is to hear other people's experiences. There was one of the CDs I was listening to and the man said, I don't know if it was, um, I can't remember who it was, but he said, if you tell him who your mentor is or who your idol is, somebody you look up to, he will know the direction your life is going. And so for me, people I kind of admire, people like Oprah Winfrey, People like Anthony Robbins, people like um, Bob Proctor. So these are people who, Les Dennis, you know, these are people who they've, they've taken on knowledge. They've had horrible experiences growing up. But, but it, it did not stop them. Because you're going to hear everyone with a tale of because this happened to me that's why my life stopped because that happened to me that's why my life stopped and then that happened and then that happened and so what we tend to do is point fingers at everybody else but that finger never points at us so when you look at some of these really great people who pull through all these challenges of life you find that they were as normal as you and I and they took it on and they did not let those scenarios stop them and that's what one of some of the things people said they said god never promised us that you're going to have this amazing life but he did promise us that you will be a stronger person if you overcome all these challenges there is nobody out there who doesn't have problems who's not experiencing difficult things but you see people who take on difficulty as if it's, it's an excuse. The reason why nothing should walk around them. So one of my favorite ways or one of my best ways is to allow myself to listen to other people's stories. And be guided by them. Because what happens is if you take knowledge from everybody like I'm sharing my knowledge with you. What you can then do, take my knowledge, take somebody else's knowledge, just take as many knowledge as you can find, and it will help you to grow. You know, when I was thinking of, because now I know I really have to take on sharing knowledge, life experiences with as many people as I can. When I was thinking about it, I said, 
but there are so many people who do this already. The likes of Anthony Robbins and, and, and so many of them. Why, why would what I have to say make any difference? Then I realized most of these people, which I'm going to show you most of the CDs and DVDs that I listen to and I watch and all of that and read their books, these are people based in America. And so their experiences are American based, their lifestyle is American based. And then I come from Africa, I have spent half of my life in Africa and I've spent half of it in Europe. So what I bring on board is completely different from somebody who grew up in America. And so I'm happy to bring my experiences of life on board. I mean, I have, I came up, I grew up with 15 siblings. Not to talk about the, 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 the concubines that my dad had, children from other women. And if we were talking about, oh yeah, silver spoon, I never saw that. I didn't even know what silver spoon looked like. I mean, Christmas Day was the only day you had new outfits on for you. So the rest of the year, you wore whatever was there. We walked for miles to go to school. And Christmas Day was when we had chicken to eat. And life wasn't anything like what I see living here. But of course I went through all of that. And one of the, the most important things my dad shared with all of us was education. You must take up education. Because when I die, this is my dad, when I die, I'm not leaving anything for anyone. And how could he, with 16 children, what could he possibly have left for anyone to share? And so no one sat there and waited for anything to be handed down. When we live here now, you, you see children, all they are interested in is the, the property their parents are going to leave behind and their pot of money their parents are going to leave behind and, and things like that. My dad was point blank, when I die, there's nothing for anybody. The education you're getting now is all you're going to get. Get knowledge and carry on with your life. And that's what I did. And so the more I read up, the more I listen to people, the more I'm surviving, the more I'm curious about how can I help other people come out of challenges of life. I mean, I had the experience coming over here and struggling with what life meant to be a, in a completely new environment. And then I had to finally get a job and I was working in this corporate job and then of course made redundant with three children to feed. And then what did I do? I realized I had to put the skill in my hands. And then I took that on. And now I took it on, then I realized, okay, there may be women like me who are struggling to cope with their family. Why don't I share my skill of how to work with hair with them? Hence, I started training people in hair. And when people then started complaining, we, you're too far away from us, we can't reach you, it costs a lot of money to get to you. We created a DVD pack which has over 30 DVDs, no, 30 DVDs, which I've shown you over and over, over 21 different skills in this pack. And this was what got me started, at least to provide for my children. This is the skill I share with people to also do the same thing. But then I realized that that's not enough. Some people don't just want skills and what do they do with it? Of course, I've put in there as well how to grow the business. But then I'm realizing again that it is not enough. People need to be more aware of what life is. People need to develop more. And one of the courses I'm doing right now in my um, travel and tourism, a module in there says the developing manager. And one of the things they said there was, no matter what business you, you set up, if the owners in that business do not develop, 
if they do not catch up with technology, if they are not seeing new things that are happening, internet is the, is the in thing now, which is where you can see me on YouTube, social media. If you're not catching up with things like that, you will be left behind. And then, then you're left behind, what happens? Your business is left behind. Your business is left behind, what happens? It dies. So you may have the greatest skill ever, but if no one knows that you have that skill, is it going to grow? And so that just grew something in my head, developing. We have to keep developing. And then of course, the more I get to be interested in this topic, the more I'm reading up things. The, most of these CDs and DVDs that I bought over time, this is one called How to Be a No Limit Person. And this is another great person called Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I bought this thing some time ago. Because when I started my business, one of the things they taught us then was uh, uh, neuro linguistic programming, which I talked about here as well, NLP. And that captured my attention. It's about how we think. And that excited me. I need to share this knowledge with people. So I bought this CDs getting the knowledge from there this one is the power of visualization and again lots of cds in it listen to them and think thoughts that are more useful to you this one was the sh the power of the power to shape your destiny this was anthony robbins anthony robbins is one of the greatest personal development person or motivation speaker at the moment he does his courses are the prizes are, are unreachable to be able to attend an anthony robbins class to change the way you think because it comes down to how you visualize things it comes down to how you see things this is another one from Dr. David Hawkins. Again, pack of CDs that I listen to. Another big name is Brian Tracy. Pack of CDs. It's endless, the amount of CDs. And these things are not cheap. I invested money and I'm taking time to listen to them. And you know the interesting thing with knowledge and development as well? Each time you listen to them, each time you read a book, Bob Proctor, in, he's on YouTube guiding and guiding as much as he can. There's a book, Think and Grow Rich. He says he reads it practically 10, 5, 15 times in a year. He continuously reads it. Why? Because each time he reads it, something new comes to him. Because it depends on your state of mind at that time. It depends on how receptive you are to that information at that time. And, and so books like this, like The Science of Getting Rich, which I've shown here as well, one of the biggest things science of getting rich is reminding us again is the mind and he actually calls it a gold mine calls the mind a gold mine a fertile land now remember in the bible when god said when god started creation and and everywhere was dark and god said let there be light and there was light and then God said, let's create man in our own image. So a bit of God is in all of us. Seven billion of us, God is in all of us. And then God said, go here and multiply, which is go and carry on this job that I've been doing. Hence, we can all create all kinds of things. So this book then reminds us to say, that mind that we have is that fertile land. Anything you plant in your mind, which is where Think and Grow Rich reminds us as well. 
anything you plant in your mind you can act on it from the mind you 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 conceptualize it you imagine it one of the things NLP taught me he said give it color touch it feel it smell it so you use all your senses like that power of visualization you use all your senses to create this thing in your mind and what they say is everything we create we create it twice I just finished a hairstyle on a doll and I had in my head I had created all the image in my head what I was going to do the color the length the design I created all of that in my head I knew what I was going to do because it was all there then I acted upon it on the door but you see when I acted upon it did it come out exactly the way I thought about it in my head no so at this stage when you finish visualizing it coloring it giving it all the image and the life you could in your head and then you put it into action if it's not exactly how the head had formed it you will know you will know and then you will fix it so what this gave me now is another hairstyle that my head has formed now because what i've done did not pick up exactly what i thought so a new idea has come okay maybe next time what you can do is do this part like this and do that palette maybe you could introduce something else maybe you could and you see that's how the mind works and that's why they say don't be afraid to start because the minute you start things change you can improve on it but there are not so many people who will not start anything in their life until it is perfect there's no such thing as perfection it's all about growth it's all about development so start it anyway there's a book i read called uh, 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 feel the fear but do it anyway susan i can't remember her son in but, but feel the fear do it anyway i have the book you whenever you're starting any new thing you'll be concerned you'll be worried you'll be you'll be asking yourself questions am i sure i want to do this how, how is it going to be like what will happen so all these normal questions will come especially anything that's brand new but then that book says feel the fear try it anyway and when you try it, just like I did with her door, when you try, it may not be exactly what you thought. And then you have the room to change it. And that's how life be becomes. That's how life grows. And that's what we mean by mind development. Because as you're growing, remember you're not growing physically anymore. Now you are a man, you put, you put away childish things. What you now want to do is to grow your understanding of things. Grow the way you understand things. Just like I'm trying to understand how we reason and how we think, that's how you could grow your understanding on anything. When I started here, I took up courses. I've shown on a video here a bag full of CDs just the same way I'm acquiring CDs in personal development right now I'm buying books about personal development that's how I started with hair I wanted to hear everybody's take on various things in hair and the minute I got all their understanding I added it to the way I understood it and I practiced it and I came up with my own version of what my experience has taught me so the same thing i'm doing with personal development now i'm looking at everybody else doing various things in personal development and i'm gonna put it all together and i'm gonna create my version of understanding it so this is how we grow in every topic every topic whatever that topic is that you want to take on i'm taking on an interest in nutrition and I took up a course in it as well and now I understand 
basic things on nutrition. Understand how the body repairs itself. Understand the types of food the body needs to keep it going. Understand the types of food you need to feed a child with to help that child grow. Understand diseases. Understand what we could be putting into our body in the form of chemicals that may hurt our body. So that's nutrition. I'm, right now I'm taking a course as well in travel and tourism. I am beginning to understand the various things different countries are doing to encourage the growth of tra uh, uh, traveling and tourism in their country. I'm understanding the amount of employment they're creating. I'm understanding the amount of you know, uh, 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 um, exports. Export any is the country is getting. Various countries across the world. That's because I'm taking an interest in it. That's because I am into it. I am, I am researching into it. I'm asking questions in it. That's what development means. So, if you decide to stay stuck in one place in your life, Growth stops. Development stops. And then what happens? You don't grow anymore. And at this stage, you may tell yourself you're an adult, like the Bible says, now you're a man, throw away childish things. You are not growing at all. You're stuck in one place. And then when people talk about you, they say, look at that one still acting like a child. Look at that one still behaving like a child. Why? Because you have not taken on any new knowledge. Because you have not taken on any development. So there's so many ways about this. You need to take on skills. So if it's skill that's what you're interested in, take on skills. If it's knowledge you want to take on, read up books, read magazines, attend events. Go to workshops. Spend money. That's what the Bible says there. Proverbs 4-7. Above all things, gain understanding. It says it may cost you. But that's the first thing you need. Because for you to tell yourself you know anything, you have to know that thing. And one of the things that really touches me when people are trying to claim ignorance. What is the price of ignorance? Because you hear people say, oh, knowledge is so expensive. And somebody asks once, what is the price of ignorance? Because since you don't want to know something, what are you gaining by being ignorant? Because knowledge is so important. And you know what knowledge brings? In as much as people want to say knowledge is power, yes, knowledge is power, it's good to know that. But knowledge is confidence. Nothing is as important as a confident person. When you know what you're talking about, you are confident in it. And when you're confident, no one can kick you around. And that's one of the things that we are struggling with we Africans, we black people, we don't know most things. And you know how they say, know-how is such an expensive commodity, know-how. The minute you don't know how, people make fun of you. The minute you don't know how, people take you for a ride. And look at us in Africa. We have so much natural resources, but we don't know how to handle it. And what's happening? The rest of the world kick, kick us around. They treat us like that. Or the dark continent. Yes, because we don't know how. And that's why Bible told us, above all things, seek understanding. He says, my people suffer for lack of knowledge. And so the big message I came here to share with you today is, Learn to develop your mind. Learn to develop it. Because mind development never stops. 
Don't, don't kid yourself and say, I'm, I'm 50 years old, I don't need to grow anymore. I'm 60 years old, what, what's there for me? Let other people grow. What you're invariably saying to yourself is, I'm dead. Because you cannot be living and not know what is happening in the world. And you know, there's one of those sayings that says, life is for living. If you can still breathe, what stops you from trying to know what is going on around you? What stops you from asking questions? It's like all this technology and social media and internet and all of that happening around you. People who run businesses are hiding their business from online and you're looking for clients. All your clients are online. It's one of the courses I'm chasing right now, how to be as good as possible online. All your clients are online. And so people who have taken their businesses online are the ones getting the clients. So if you are quite happy, I, I want to stay offline. I know so many people that don't even bother going to shops anymore. All they do, they want to buy anything, go online and they search it and they find it and they just order it. So if you're locking your business away and telling yourself you know it all and you, you stopped knowing, you're not interested anymore, that's how they move away. And that's the developing manager. You killed your business because you refused to develop with times. So please, as usual, when I know something, I'll be happy to share with you. My message is, let's try and develop our mind continuously. And you know, there are people who they say, the minute, let's say, um, they were made redundant or they, they've been, they, they, um, yeah, they, they've been made redundant and suddenly they go home and they lose interest in life. And the next thing, oh, he picked up some illness and he's dying. Because he lost interest in life. So it is so important to stay in touch with what's going on. And the thing with the human mind is there's no end to it. You cannot, you cannot you cannot describe the human mind. You cannot stretch it. You cannot put a length to it or a width to it. You cannot say this is only the amount of information that the human mind can take. No, the human mind has a capacity beyond imagination. And what they say, there's a movie I watched that was relating to the human mind and it was called Lucy. And this movie says, we don't even use 5% of our human mind capacity in a lifetime. There's so many books I have on that as well. We don't use 5%. People who have even tried and gone further use 10%. So the capability of what our human mind can carry is so much, yet people give up on their minds. People stop growing. So I'm going to end it here. Try and look into yourself. Try and start taking up courses. Short, short courses, one day course, two day course, it does not matter. Start buying more books and reading. Start buying CDs and listening to them. Start going on YouTube and listening to people who help to open your mindset. Because these are the things. Remember the Bible says we're here for 70 years and maybe when we're lucky we we'll stretch it. You cannot be here for 70 years and you have no value to add to life. There's so much in you. There's so much in all of us that we can use to touch lives, to better people's lives. And it's just a few that get to get this understanding. Now, one of the passages in the Bible says the, 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 the harvest is many, but the workers are few. I understand that. I understand that to mean it is just a few people that will take on knowledge. It's a few people that will take on understanding. It's a few people that can help others to grow. And so if a few of us can take up these arms and start 
expanding our knowledge which our mind is capable of taking so much or whatever we bring to it we should do it we should be the voice for others we should help them grow because the more we can share this knowledge with other people the better they will become too and then we'll be able to create a better life for everybody but as it is now just a few people have this understanding just a few people have this knowledge. And it's only these few that are actually enjoying life at the moment. So we all need to join them. So thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless you.